Jeff Moore, a writer from Baseball Perspectives, described Mets second baseman Jeff McNeil as not likely to ever be an everyday player, as his flaws would be exposed with regular playing time. Jeff McNeil is a player who has been constantly doubted throughout his meteoric rise from 12th round draft pick to major league superstar. He was never a ranked prospect, even within rankings that only included Mets players. There was quite literally zero hype surrounding him as a prospect until an exceptional 2018 in AAA forced a Mets team undergoing significant roster shuffle to give him a shot. And he didn't waste the shot that was given to him, excelling with the Mets, providing both gold glove caliber fielding at second base and excellent contact hitting. In order to see how good his fielding is, you can look at StatCast's outs above average, a pretty simple metric that shows, to put it simply, how many outs a player can save over your average fielder. Among second basemen in 2022, Jeff McNeil ranks 6th in outs above average, putting him firmly into elite defensive territory. Although obviously it's not his fielding that makes him so interesting, it's his fairly unusual, for the time, style of hitting that really puts him on the map. His goal whenever he gets to the plate is pretty simple. Make contact and do not strike out. He just so happens to be one of the best in the league at those two things, so it works out. From his debut in 2018 through 2022, Jeff McNeil was among five qualified hitters with a batting average of at least 300. Among those five, he ranked second, only behind perennial all-star Freddie Freeman. He reached new heights in 2022, where he put up a 326 batting average en route to the National League batting title. And if there was an MLB batting title, he would have won that too, as he had the absolute highest batting average in the entire league. He also had the third lowest strikeout percentage in the league, and he provides this spark from a spot in the lineup where you wouldn't normally expect it, spending over half of his at-bats past the fifth spot in the lineup. So yeah, pretty good ball player. Now, let's get into the fun stuff. WOBA, or weighted on base average, is an incredibly useful statistic that gives you a very holistic view of a player's value. It gathers together every outcome that a player has in each of their at-bats and weighs those outcomes based on every other occurrence of that outcome in MLB that year. McNeil's WOBA is 365, which is the 23rd highest in the league. Taking into account all these stats and more, you can clearly see that he's a completely elite player. His wins above replacement, a statistic that shows how many wins a player contributes to a team over having a hypothetical random guy in his place, ranks 16th on fan graphs and 17th on baseball reference amongst position players. So that's it then. Jeff McNeil is a fantastic baseball player, one of the very best in the league irregardless of position. There couldn't possibly be anything wrong with his statistical case, right? Well, not exactly. Let's go back to those offensive stats for a moment. These might seem like ironclad examples of how great of a player he is, but there's a little bit more there. You see, StatCast has another set of stats to accompany the more basic stats that are purely based on the results the player got. Expected stats are, well, exactly what you would expect. They are calculated by looking at the quality of contact from balls in play, rather than just the actual result of the contact. These metrics, as opposed to more results-based metrics, allow us to get a more precise outlook on a player's future rather than their present. And outside of a 2021 that was far below McNeil's normal expectations, these expected stats have not looked good for him. For now, we'll look back at WOBA, as it is one of the most all-encompassing hitting stats available. In the past five seasons, Jeff McNeil's WOBA has looked excellent, with the only sticking point being that poor 2021 season. In four of those five seasons, once again excepting 2021, he ranked within the top 15 WOBA minus X WOBA, meaning he performed largely above expectations for most of his career. It's part of the reason lots of people have been down on him for most of his career, as his underlying numbers have consistently shown us that he's not the player that his basic stats may say he is. But once again, he's been able to outperform those numbers for essentially 80% of his career. There has to be some sort of explanation for such a blatant anomaly. Now, there's one thing that I can think of to answer this question. Maybe it's the ballpark that he plays in. Wilbur doesn't account for park factor, so it could easily be that he plays in a ballpark that allows for slightly inflated hitting numbers. But that's not the case, is it? City Field, the home park for the Mets, is notoriously very unfriendly towards hitters, boasting the fifth worst overall park factor on StatCast. 
If anything, a hitter in City Field may consistently underperform their expected metrics, as opposed to whatever the hell is going on with Jeff McNeil. So how do you explain this? Well, it's more simple than you might think. The expected stats use two main metrics in order to figure out hit probability, those being exit velocity and launch angle. Now these are two very, very useful stats in order to figure out an outcome. Exit velocity gives you how hard someone hits a ball, and launch angle gives you how high someone hits a ball. Both of these together give you a really good impression of the quality of contact that a hitter has in any given at bat. Now let's see how our main man Jeff ranks in these categories in his all-star level 2022 campaign. Um, okay. So we can see why his expected stats don't exactly come out the way you'd want them to. They're not exactly the makings of a batting champ with an above 800 OPS. So let's take stock of what we have here. We have a player who consistently outperforms his expected metrics, who doesn't hit the ball very hard or very hot. So what are we not accounting for? To put it simply, we're missing an entire geometric plane. The metrics used in expected stats successfully account for the vertical aspect of hits when taking into account launching. But what they fail to account for is the horizontal aspect of baseball. You see, this may come as a shock, but hits do not just go up and down. They can also go side to side. And that happens to be the way McNeil excels. Rather than hitting for really good quality of contact, he comes up to the plate with a slightly more antiquated approach. He hits in order to get the ball in play at all costs. This may seem like a gamble, and for most players, it absolutely is. Your average MLB player does not have Jeff McNeil's unique ability to command the direction of his hits with excellent bat control. Jeff McNeil does have that ability though, and that's part of what gives him such a unique statistical profile. He can find those gaps that other hitters would never dream of hitting towards. He's such a brilliant hitter that he even confounds metrics that are supposed to project for the future, not just the present. But does that mean that these stats need to be changed? Not necessarily. Any change to those expected metrics that would account for horizontal hit placement would require radical changes to those metrics. And honestly, it's hard to see why it would be worth it. Like I said, the skill McNeil possesses is a rare one, and accounting for such a small percentile of players by changing the way an entire major statistical category is calculated is a little insane. Instead, we should just appreciate Jeff McNeil and use his career thus far as a lesson. His case for being a spectacular, possibly even top 50 player going to next season, rests on much more than his advanced metrics. In order to properly wield those advanced stats, you need to be able to use them in tandem with the game itself. Statistics are not the be-all end-all, and a solid baseline of knowledge, whether from first-hand experience or from coursing over game tape, needs to be applied so you can get the full picture of a player's abilities. Without that knowledge, it's hard to fully appreciate a player like McNeil, because Jeff McNeil, with his unique skill set and inhuman ability to make contact, is the man who beat the numbers.